Welcome to the final program by Inconvenient Questions or IQ for General Election 2020. You may call it our Eve of Cooling Off Day special. It's a one hour wrap up program called GE Final Thoughts. I'm Vishwa Sadashivan, your moderator. To help with the analysis today, we have a panel of five distinguished persons. Wuntai Ho, uh, media consultant and CEO, Rights Asia, a media veteran with over 25 years of experience. He was behind the launch and regional expansion of Channel News Asia and formerly the managing director of Media Corp News. Welcome, Tai Ho. Thank you. Second, we have uh, Nicholas Fang, former nominated member of parliament or NMP and currently managing director of Black Dog, a, a strategic communications consultancy. And um, hi, Nick. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Next, we have Associate Professor Bilbir Singh, uh, a, a name that's well known when it comes to Singapore politics. Um, he's, been, he's been commenting on Singapore politics since I was an embryo. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's currently, he currently teaches at the Department of Political Science at the National University of Singapore. How many years have you been teaching there, Bilbir? 41. 41. 41 years. See, I told you, I mean, you were teaching from the time I was an embryo. Okay. <laughs> Donald Lowe, Professor Donald Lowe, Professor of Practice in Public Policy and Director of Institute of Emerging Market Studies at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. His research focuses on inequality and social policy as well as politics and the governance of Singapore. Hi, Donald. Hi, welcome. Um, and last but certainly not least, uh, Quan Jinyao. Uh, Jinyao is a PhD candidate at the University of California, Los Angeles. And he runs a site called socialservice.com, uh, sorry, socialservice.sg. It's focused on presenting and explaining social service research in Singapore. Hi, hi, Chin Yao. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So, so let's ask yeah. Chin Yao. You, 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 have you voted before? Yeah, yes. this is supposedly my second time, but second I'm time. The but, Los so, Angeles. So you're Somos obviously you. the youngest amongst us, uh, <laughs> even, even younger than Bill Beer. So, uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts about, about all the points that have been raised? Yeah, I mean, clearly, the, clearly the impact on young people. Mm. I mean, in terms of the conduct itself, the disappointment is palpable. I think my disappointment, or and I speak not as an expert, but as a young observer informed by conversations with young, other young voters, right? The disappointment here is that we were hoping for a more substantial, substantive discussion. Mm. And I think the important context here is that we were, in fact, we're not post-COVID yet. We're still very much in the middle yeah. of a pandemic. And even in that context as well, in the last five years, at least from a social welfare perspective, I don't think there's been a period of five years when we've had rich discussions about inequality, about poverty, about homelessness, about the importance of a living wage. So coming into it, the expectation was that in the 9 day period, this would be the substantive issues that we'll focus on, right? So, and to be fair, some of the parties, I think, do have substantive manifestos. Um, the BUP, um, I think the SDP policies, they have been examined. Uh, fellow voters have looked at it and examined it in detail. But I think what we're recognizing is kind of two things. Number one, there's a very clear communication divide. So the example I always come to, we talked about Ms. Khan, was that when the news first broke on Twitter, there was a, she was the number one trending topic. So the I stand with uh, Raisa hashtag yeah. was number one. But I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, it ever appeared on mainstream media. That, that the fact that she was trending, that the hashtag no. was trending on. on I mean, not, not, not so strongly. There, was, there right. were hints. There were hints, yeah. Right. So, and then the second one is also a recognition that the G itself is not where discussions can happen. And yes, there's some recognition, but I think there's also recognition that a lot of the discourse has to happen between the Gs itself. So, you know, when we are discussing between the progressive wage model and the minimum wage, right, mm -hmm. we can't discuss the nuances of it in this election. Now, even the ruling party has said it wants to extend PWM, but what does it actually mean beyond the, um, the three sectors it's currently applied to? And what does the minimum wage mean? So how do we assess what's a reasonable minimum wage? Just can't do that within the nine days. And hopefully, my little sense of optimism is that it's not all recognition that the political culture is completely toxic. There's this recognition that the work happens after July 10th as well, and not just um, yeah. during these so, nine days. So I want to cut to politics doesn't just happen. It's often mm. the reaction to something, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I think it's, it's a lot of pent up feelings, you know, that that's being reacted to. I mean, these, these, it's, it's coming out at this point in time. If I, if I could go back to Chin Yao, you know, you, you are involved in, in social media, right? I mean, you've got a site, you know, uh, 
what kind of issues do you all talk about in your in your site? So it depends. So the, the questions I ask, so I mean, this is how I frame it. So the questions that people are asking are actually more national than municipal, right? So, um, and if they are undergrads, then they are more concerned about job opportunities and employment. So we've heard talk about broad themes about jobs and employment, but now the question is what the specifics are. So what kinds of jobs and what types of jobs do we want? That's one. And I think the other bigger point, a more meta point is about diversity. So we talked about, you know, uh, representation, about um, wanting to see your ideas and your policies and principles represented in parliament, which is where, where, where laws are made in that sense. But there's also, I think, a third point, which maybe speaks to what you're saying, which is that goes beyond issues itself, which is understanding that the process of making change does not just depend on the government itself. So mm -hmm. I think it's been too, there's this... Um, I think we're far too accustomed to being like passive participants. So mm. the government sets the terms of the agenda, right? We have to adhere to our Singapore conversation. We participate in it. But there is now a bit of greater recognition that we actually push the issue based on a ground up kind of movement. And you see do them... You think, do you think up. young people like you uh, would, be, would be prompted to take charge a lot more and say, let's do something. Let's do something. Yeah, because, I mean, because it's going to be your world. Yeah, so what? So I've done the episodes on the, the website, right? So these youths, they volunteer with the political parties. They send emails and messages to candidates and constituencies. They run their own websites to increase awareness. They comb through the manifesto. Now, you might say, hey, that's selection bias because I'm only speaking to those who are already informed. But then these voters, are, these voters are generating content. They're aggregating information. And more importantly, they are also talking to their family and friends. So through our interviews, they're talking about having hard conversations with their parents, right? You might say, oh, that's a very small step. But I think that's how change slowly gets accumulated, where you actually broach these difficult topics and, hey, why are you voting in a particular direction? And why is it that you're... Are young people disappointed? I think they will be, as in, I mean, I, I think there will be a sense of disappointment in, on July 10th in the mm -hmm. evening when the results don't pan out the way it's expected. Right. Mm -hmm. but let me I ask think you, uh, Chin Yao, is, is there is there a bifurcation? Is there is there a separate? I mean, we talk about young people as if you are a, you're a, you're a, yeah. you know homogeneous group. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it's quite different. I mean, there, there are different young people I talk to. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of young people I talk to who want status quo, mm -hmm. who who don't want things to change, who are extremely uh, loyal to the to the ruling party and so on. So you know, I'm not sure what we mean by how do young people feel in general. Yeah, is that's it true. To and generalize? And if there's someone like that, I think that's great. As in, I don't think the idea of, of, of um, participation is homogeneity where everyone thinks the same way. I want a yeah. space where different individuals with different points of views with different principles right. can come in. Now, of course, in certain issues, this both sides now thing might be problematic, right? Because certain mm -hmm. things I think are inalienable. But on most issues, I think there's this opportunity to open up space like this. Yeah. Up, if I can pick up from what you say, and I'd like to put this question to Chin Yao. You know, you are, you are the youngest amongst us. Idealism is still there, strong, not jaded. I'm right. still idealistic. So, so, <laughs> hey, yeah, say we are jaded. All right, so let me, let me ask you this, right? Uh, when, 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 I, when I said at one point, when I said in my letter to the Straits Times that, you know, it is possible to take the, the dirty out of politics. I said it is possible to take the dirty out of politics. A lot of my friends uh, of, the, of similar vintage told me you must be mad. You know, politics is by definition dirty. You can't. Now, I don't believe in it. Honestly, I think it is possible to take it out. What do you think? Young people, I, you all believe that it can be, does politics have to be dirty? I will kind of respond to it by uh, alluding to this kind of like um, tension that, not tension, but this slight disagreement that you and Prof Donald have, which is continuity and changing the structure, right? Someone wiser than me used to say, um, say to me, which is, it's possible to, uh, to campaign for reform within the structure and work within the structure, but also um, work within the structure for the future as well. So like you can do two things at once. You can change the system, but also work within the system to make it better. So that's, those are not mutually exclusive. And the way to answer your question, I think here there is a recognition that there are certain type of, and which is what Nicholas mentioned, there's a certain personality of, of candidates that people are drawn to. And it's mm -hmm. not just based on how you articulate your narrative and background, right? There were um, candidates I, who spoke to their low-income backgrounds and it used to be a immediate sell, right? Because it speaks that you can um, relate to their background, but there's a growing recognition that it's not just um, the amount of privilege you have, but how you use it. And so 
in a way, I think in this sense, more particularly the few WP candidates who have used Twitter very well and presented themselves in very human ways, I think were the most effective in it. And I think it's not just limited to the WP state where they were able to show, for instance, um, snippets in their lives, right? Um, you know, where they came from, how they are. So there is a particular type. I'm not sure what that type looks like. But it looks something like that. I, I think know. the key so, here yeah. is the key here is authenticity. You know? authenticity. Uh, Jun Hao, uh, I see you nodding very quickly. So in that's a great point, and I would just see and extend Prof Bilva's point to say that that form of engagement cannot just happen during the election itself. I think there's a demand for this to happen regularly, and that's something that's um, not mandated or framed singularly by the state itself. You know, we've seen past engagement attempts like the OSC, which is well-intentioned, but because it's designed in a particular way, it's not elicited the kind of engagement that's seen. And the other quick point would be that the types of people we engage. So I imagine like individuals who are in the form who listen to this are very well informed, right? Then the yes, challenge now yes. is to how do you broaden the participation from a youth perspective? How do you reach the marginalized and disadvantaged? That's a huge challenge that I think has been overlooked for too long and that needs to be fixed also. Yeah, just Chen Yang. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with all the assessments. I'm not an expert, so I'm going to be naive. But I'm going to say, I'm going to make a post-GE um, prediction. I'm going to disagree slightly with Prof Donald. I'm going to say that um, it wouldn't be resignation. Or it wouldn't be radicalization or resignation. I think there'll be a period where we'd be really disappointed with the result. But I think two things. Number one, I think the parties are realizing that the online and social media space is something that they have not capitalized on before this election. Um, you know, had it not been for the pandemic, maybe one silver lining is that many of the online rallies and all the online webinars have been great. As in, this is a very direct way to connect with not just young voters, but anyone. And previously, had it not been for something like this, this wouldn't be something that they could work on. And hopefully this is something that continues. I think the second thing is, and that's from my perspective, and I'm hoping it's a self-fulfilling prophecy where we want things to change. I don't just mean politically, but in terms of the way we engage. And so maybe from the starting point of wanting things to change and being, being the change you want to see kind of thing, that we will actually um, have a, a more diverse, not just politically again, but like a more diverse representation during the next election. Yeah. So okay. that's my cop out answer. Right. Right? The young man gets the final word. I guess for the ruling party, it would, it would be to not see opposition and I mean it generally as like uh, not see disagreements as opposition um, before the pandemic and before the election itself advocates activists academics researchers have been pointing to many of the gaps and inequalities and mm -hmm. by pointing something out that disagrees with existing policies is not opposition to current it's not opposition to the state itself and maybe even progressively divorcing um, equating the state with the country itself or with the government with the country itself that would be one I think for the opposition, one thing that I think has stood out this time around negatively is um, the anti-immigration sentiments that sometimes border on xenophobia. Mm. I think we've had enough of it. I think we've had enough of it through um, the white paper protests and all these things. And I think it's time to move on from it. So, yeah.